we promise we won't put you on a committee. How's that? <laughs> so, but if you want to help with uh, any of those things, it takes a lot of people to make worship happen. So we hope that you will be willing to do that. Um, you can always go to our website, newjourneyucc.org, for more information on uh, anything that's going on at the church. Are there other announcements that I have missed? If not, let's continue with worship. Please stand and join me in our call to worship. The Lord is creator of all. May we tremble in awe. May we praise God's great and awesome name. Our mighty God is a lover of justice. May we strive for equity and righteousness. When our ancestors cried out to God, God answered them. And God, God responds to our prayers and pleas. Worship the wondrous and mighty one. Holy is our God.
first reading today is from Exodus 24, 12 to 18. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again. For Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up to the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. There is a you. 
continue our reading in Matthew 16, 20, 24 through 17, 9. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if we gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with the angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Six days later, Jesus took with them Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my Son, the Beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus alone. So, sometimes the mountaintop is not literally a mountaintop. Right? Don't get me wrong, I'm living in Salt Lake City, um, but there was nothing quite like that feeling when I would be driving to the church on, on a Sunday morning and the sun was shining off of the snow-capped peaks of the Wasatch Mountains. And you just take a breath and you feel that feeling of openness, that feeling of wonder. But not always a mountaintop, and that, what you're looking at on the screen, is one of my mountaintop experiences. That calls to mind a moment with such a deep, deep sense of belonging for me. Not to a group of people because I knew no one in that place, but a sense of belonging to the place itself to this tiny little community situated along a flowing river north of the Arctic Circle. It's the Tornay River in Yukasherbi, just outside of Kiruna, Sweden. Maybe it's because of the family letters that we have that were written in that place and sent to my great-grandmother over a hundred years ago. Maybe it was just my reflective mode, knowing that my trip would be ending soon and as I traveled south again on my way home back to Minnesota. I still can't put my finger on it. But I know that I am curiously, almost obsessively drawn to pictures that I am now seeing on Facebook from that place. And I have this deep longing to return, to once again experience the midnight sun, to experience the northern lights in a time with no sunrise at all. So I want to ask you to think for a moment. What moment, either in recent memory or long ago, do you consider a mountaintop moment? When was it that you felt that sense of awe and wonder or a sense of contentment and rightness?
When did all the striving go away for just a moment? When did you feel without a doubt that you were experiencing something sacred? Was it in or near nature as it was for me? Or was it in the midst of a bustling city when you felt alive in a new way? Was it when you made time for calm or when you risked it all for a moment of excitement? Was it at a moment of profound tragedy or indescribable joy? You know I always give you time to talk, so I want to know if anybody wants to share any such moment with the rest of the congregation this morning. Julie's getting the microphone. I guess I can say um, when I was up at Grand Portage for a rendezvous, um, I got up early and went sat by the lake, as she was calling, and um, there was a gentleman playing the bagpipes, serenading the plane, and it just felt, everything just felt right there, and that's still one of my favorite places. And then that same time up there was that beautiful moon that came up over the high mountain. It was just amazing. You can see people picturing it in their minds. go to Niagara Falls in so 2019, my brother and I went, and we went to underneath, and you can come out and you're standing right next to the falls, and just seeing the power of that water coming down, knowing that you know, how many people have died trying to cross it. It's just an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, past fall, we had the opportunity to go to a wedding out in the Black Hills. And it was really probably beneficial for me personally because I, in my youth, uh, visited Mobridge, South Dakota with uh, spending time with my grandparents. And we would go to the Black Hills as a little Activity. But the spirituality that exists out there in South Dakota is, it, it, the spirituality permeates the whole area. And it, it's uh, so very, very sacred. And I feel very blessed that I've had experiences with the Black Hills Bay, it just, it lifts me up. We have these stories, Moses going up the mountain, Jesus going up the mountain and taking with him Peter, and James, and John, and in that moment of awe, in that moment when they knew something special, something sacred was going on, they were terrified, right? Scriptures tell us they were terrified. In that moment, all they could do was bow in fear, 
while Jesus was having this amazing moment and they were witnessing it, right? And then Peter, good old Peter, Peter just wanted to stay there. And don't we know what that means, right? We who have experienced that kind of awe, that kind of wonder, we just want to hold on to it forever. And how can we hang on? How can we, how can we live that feeling? It's tempting. It's tempting to stay in those holy moments, but there is Jesus saying, nope. Gotta go back down the mountain. I had a choice between two different uh, pericopes, we call them, the section of the scripture that you read, right? Because the Revised Common Lectionary wanted us to just start with the, um, the story on the mountain. But the Narrative Lectionary said, no, you have to have the context first. So how does this story begin before they go up the mountain together? Anybody remember? Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone will become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? So it's been seven months since I returned from my sabbatical, and I understand that passage in a very new way. And I understand why in our denomination we covenant not to break a ministry partnership for at least a year following a sabbatical. And no, do not hear that I'm planning on leaving. This is another one of my sacred places, right? I have no intention of leaving. But I'm in a spiritual place that was growing toward that, but since that event, it challenges me to question more and more and more, and a part of that questioning must always be to ask, as I am being changed in one direction, are we still a good fit for one another? So that's why I understand the ruling. Since going on that sabbatical, since taking a step back from the hustle and bustle, I'm moving farther and farther from the wisdom of this world. I am less inclined to save the life of this world. I've been on this journey for quite some time, but post-sabbatical and post-COVID, I think, as well, I find myself moving even farther from traditional doctrinal understandings of Jesus and of Scripture. I'm questioning more, questioning entire structures and systems into which we seem as a culture, as a nation, to be inextricably bound. More than ever before, I'm drawn to different readings, readings that challenge our culture's constant growth mentality. I look at God's creation, and I think about this obsession with growth, and I see that in God's creation, nothing continues to grow eternally. All things eventually cycle toward diminishment, toward destruction, yes, toward death. And it sounds ironic that that would be coming from this life-giving moment, but in some ways, it's a reality check on what's going on in this life. We think we can preserve our lives if we do this and this and this and this, and that's not the way life works. We think that we can have a better, faster life more and more and more, and we keep clamoring for more and more and more. 
And is it feeding any of us? Did anyone, maybe there are people I'm not going to judge, but did anyone say that their mountaintop moment was buying something new? Or having more stuff? It's being with people. It's making relationships. It's reconnecting with the land that is nourishing us and giving us life. Those, that's my, a part of my latest journey since experiencing that sense of awe. But it is not the same journey, not the same transformation, you might say transfiguration. I experienced the last time I had an aha moment. So then I wonder if in fact we are led by the Holy One into the journey that we need the most. That transformation that will up our game, so to speak, as followers of Christ. That transfiguration that will open us to a new part of ourselves and a new walk with Christ and a new walk with one another. Jesus, Moses, went up the mountain, took a break, took some time with their God. We are about to enter Lent. And we've never been in the tradition of, I must give up something for Lent. That's just not been the congregational way. Um, but I wonder if we should not follow Jesus into the wilderness, which is always the first reading during Lent. And maybe just take a look around our homes, take a look at our lives, and say, how much of this is extraneous? to what really matters. How much of this is keeping me from connecting? I know I have some work to do. So I just invite you to think about that. Think about that as we enter this Lenten season. How will you choose to reconnect with all that is sacred in this world.
reflect. We reflect not because we've done horrible things, but we reflect because we know every once in a while we miss the mark. And that's okay. But we reflect together. Would you pray with me, please? Mystery of mysteries. We confess that we think we know far too much than we actually do. We think we know right from wrong, good from bad. We think we know who is beloved by you and who is not. We think we have the authority to judge. We have messed up badly. Under God, call us back into your way of grace of love and mercy and turn us away from snap judgments and overconfident perceptions. Remind us that all you have made in this universe, we are but a grain of sand, that you loved us, molded and shaped us, calls us back into a place of awe and wonder, a place where we question and listen more than we demand an answer. May we become slow to judge, quick to forgive, develop a posture of compassionate listening, and silence the voices that make us think we know better. In the name of our wise God, our Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. know that we all come from God and we return to God. With every breath know that we are loved. With every breath remember that when we love one another we reflect that love of God for us. Breathe deep for the Spirit is in you. Amen.
overflow of gratitude for your presence in this sacred place. We become grateful that we can be ourselves in this place, that we can tell you not only the beautiful and wonderful things that are going on in our lives, but that we can be honest with our struggles, with our challenges to be who we are called to be. On this day, we call to mind all of those who are struggling with depression, all of those challenged by this illness, please know we hold you in the light of Christ. We call to mind those people around the world who have known violence and tragedy that none of us can even imagine, or few of us can even imagine. Lead us, show us how we might be a part of the change in this world. to help those who are struggling due to natural disasters or violence and war, for all those who are so challenged, please know we hold you in the light of Christ. And the prayers that did not get written down that need to be lifted this morning Holy One, you have heard the prayers we have spoken aloud and you know the prayers in the depths of our hearts. Hear us now as we pray together the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Creator of all that is, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you stand and let's sing together.
Spirit with you and share it generously with the world, that all will know the love of God. Go, and may the peace of Christ go with you. Amen.